Hey, uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, ladies and gentlemen, whatever time you're tuning in the program called What's Going On. We are the program that comes on at two o'clock on allpointstv.com. I hope you will tune us in at your leisure. Those of you that cannot make it here at two o'clock, hope you will tune us in later on when you get off work. You're doing your chores and uh, you can tune us in at any time on the number of networks that we're on. And I want to, uh, again, thank uh, Rumble and some of the others, the ones that were the pioneers in being with us when we didn't have um, a lot of outlets. Now we have a number of outlets. I want to thank all of you for uh, staying with us and helping us build this um, this 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 uh, studio and this uh, network. We are trying to bring a service here, and uh, we're getting a lot of uh, good feedback from those who appreciate what we're trying to do. We're not we're not not going to be uh, ever ever be any uh, millionaires here, but um, that's not really our goal. Our goal is to try to do some things that's going to help to get this country back under control under the uh, under the uh, founding documents of the uh, country. And these are the greatest documents that's ever been created about uh, around uh, the idea of setting up government. So all we need to do is go back and get the architectural plans and put them back in place and then go from there to do other great other great things. But we're not going to go anywhere unless we can get the, get the foundation um, um, uh, back in place. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is uh, talking about what is happening uh, with the uh, Donald Trump case. And I want to make it clear that the framers of this country uh, understood a lot of the things that we're talking about right now. They knew that they, they, they definitely knew that power had to be chained down. They knew that. Uh, they were they were they were too astutious in terms of having studied classical history and other uh, records, and had seen power go out of control. Had, had seen empires rise and fall, and they had studied what had caused those empires to fall. I know that to be true because I know. Uh, I know that from the standpoint that um, Thomas Jefferson, who was uh, very fluent in, in French, translated the book written by Constantine Francis Vonet out of the French and, and translated it into English, the book called The Ruins of Empire by Vonet. And Jefferson wrote that book, I shouldn't say wrote it, he translated the book out of the French into the English. And that book is a is a is a jewel in terms of what happened to all these empires that were once great and now they have the ruins uh, you could go to and you have to ask yourself what happened here? Because those empires, I'm talking about the Roman Empire, uh, the Persian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, the Greek Empire and so many others that had come in and had gone out. And you could tell they were great empires by the structures that they left behind. And so the ruins of empire, Jefferson had read that book and they are the framers. They are very much aware of how they have to put things in place so as to keep power from going out of control. So in the drafting of the of the of the uh, the uh, articles of confederation what they did they went too far overboard the other way they knew power had to be restricted but it's if you restrict it so that it cannot do anything then that's another problem that's being created because the government is there to act but to act in your behalf and act in your name of course it has to have the sovereignty to do that but they'd had this experience and they had not yet overcome that anxiety that it created. And now they're trying to find the middle ground or where they can uh, use government to restrain uh, bad things from happening among the citizenry. But the, the finessing of it is after restraining, uh, getting government to restrain people, 
so they're not harming uh, each other in a domestic in the, in the domestic setting, they would not go off and to another place where it becomes the oppressing agent and it goes off and does some things itself that's equally and maybe possibly more harmful as a governing uh, body. So you have to guard against that. To restrict the, the people from acting injurious to each other and then that which you create to, to, to keep that from happening, you have to also keep the instruments you create from going out of control and being injurious on a much higher level with a lot more power to, to do, to do uh, uh, damage. And how do you do that? They've got to do a finessing here of giving power and at the same time limiting power. And I think they did. Uh, uh, it's unbelievable when you think about how they did how they rectified that. But what they did not do, and I think that Trump's lawyers have to stop stop saying this, and I, I would advise them to to get away from this argument that they, by, by, by creating the terms in which the government would operate, that they created a president that would in fact be above the, the law that they are now creating. They did not put anyone above the law. Everyone is underneath the law, and there are no persons that are above the law that can do what they want to, and the law be put as, cast aside. It doesn't matter how you uh, arbitrate uh, in between the lines, so to speak. You cannot do things that are not mandated uh, in the document. And the document is actually saying in it what they did in the document, and you can see their intent to take away all the wiggle room in the document. And that's why the word shell is in, they wore, the, they wore that word out in the document. Shell is in every paragraph in the original document, except in Article 1, Section 5, I'm talking about the Constitution now, in Article 1, Section 5, Clause 2, that is the only place in the original document, I think it is, where the word shell does not appear. In the amendments, the only place you don't have it is in the Tenth Amendment. So there now is it there is it's the document is attempting to order, not to advise, to order. It is under these terms, because they are ordering government to behave, the colonists that had had a government they felt they were under that did not behave, they now feel uncomfortable unless they can command government to act a certain way. They're not even willing to come into a, a, a alliance, a confederation, unless they have these guarantees in place. And that's why the word shell, shell continues to be uh, emoted in the document because they want to make sure government will behave. The Declaration of Independence is a document that even says that if the government does not behave, the people have the right to rise up against the, uh, against the government and even to abolish it. You see that in the Second Amendment where the people are to be armed as a way of keeping the government under wraps. The right to bear arms and to use the arms if necessary against a government that encroaches upon the people's rights and go beyond that which is delegated to the government ordained in the Article 1, Section 8, 18 clauses of that. They delegate the powers to the federal government. These are the things you can do. Beyond that, these are things you cannot do. And they were very much about making sure they did not delegate the authority away from themselves so the government could use the wiggle room to go out of control. That's why shell, shell, shell is constantly being imposed in the document upon the people who are to be governing uh, the 13 uh, states. With the ultimate reason uh, for them being compelled to do it is what's at stake here. And what's at stake here is the union itself, the mortar that glues the union together. 
ultimately what's at stake here is the right to leave the union if in fact those terms are not met. The right to succeed from the union, for example, that, that is inherently, that, that's implicit in the, in the document. Okay, so given that, what we have here today, of course we have a need to, to go back to, I always say this, we have to go back to the framers. There's no salvation otherwise. This country cannot, cannot stand on its own. It's got to stand on the shoulders of the, of the framers. They don't have the they don't have the the texture the the context the ability to create another document that will do what this document does not do. We have got to make this document work because there's nothing they can put in this place. If this cannot work, there's nothing they can put in this place that can do all the things this document does. On the one hand, give guarantees of of, of liberty, at the same time, give guarantees of that, which is to bring about the liberty, the government they created to make sure liberty will prevail, to make sure the government does not go out of control. And they did that brilliantly in terms of separating the powers and then having a balance, a, a check and balance system put in place in, in the separation. Because each power is doing a certain part of the government's job. And by being able to do that, and being enlisted to do, do that, they are able to command the space that they're operating in, given to them by the article in which it sets up their particular branch of government, where that branch will be able to do these things, not the other things. And those two other bodies will be able to do their particular roles and not do the role of, of the formal uh, uh, body, the, body, the formal body being the, le the legislative body. It cannot do that part in the executive, the executive cannot do the part in the judicial branch. And whenever there's any variance of that, then it spells out how that's to be carried out. Because you do have some functions of the uh, judicial branch in the legislative branch. But it spells out how that, that, that is to play out because it's, a, it's an oxymoron for it to be there. They recognize that, and that's why they place in it certain particulars of how they just operate inside that inside that body because that which operates in article one as part of the judicial branch uh, uh ordinary will be under that branch they had to spell out how it's to operate within that context only because that's not a legislative function but it's a it's placed in there because of the the legislator has to carry it out not the court why not because the court will eventually become the appellate branch in case things go haywire and it's not carried out the way it's, it's spilled out in the constitution, you'll be able to take it to another body for the rectification of it based on what, what is in fact written. And that's why you have impeachment in the legislative branch and not in the in the judicial branch where it really belongs as a uh, judicial um, uh, operation, so to speak. Okay, that's 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 important. Now I want to say this about um, this 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 thing that's happening right now. The, uh, they 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 they're going to try. We've not seen the the last of it yet. They're going to try to stop Donald Trump. They're not finished with that yet. These this is forerunners to see what you know. You throw mud against the wall to see what what sticks. They're trying to find out where the best place to go where there's vulnerability that they can in fact stop this, uh, what, what they see get, is re getting ready to, to happen. They see the people are in back of Donald Trump. This outsider that's not tied into quite frankly, either one of the two parties. And they see that this, is, this could be a problem. These politicians know that this man is as being positioned the way he is, where he has no other uh, support except among the people. They're not supporting inside the government. Both parties are against this man, but he does have the support of the American people. And he's built a movement as a floor for what he's trying to do through the MAGA movement. If they were about MAGA, you would not have uh, what's happening in New York. 
But MAGA is going on in New York because not all of them on board, very few of them on board with the uh, with MAGA. MAGA is to make America great again. You would think everybody in the Congress would be a part of that because what are they trying to do? If they're not trying to make the country great again, what are they trying to do? And what are they there for? There's an answer to that question, by the way. You're not going to like the answer. But by them not being a part of it, you can kind of, kind of wedge an answer to it by reading between the lines of if they're not for MAGA, what are they for? They're for themselves. They're for aggrandizing themselves at the expense of the state. These are people that's on the government dime. They don't plan to get off the government dime. And Donald Trump is posing a danger to what they have in mind in terms of their own um, uh, their own, their, I hate to say this, because, but this is true. Their own parasitic presence in, in Washington. These are parasites. And Donald Trump is, 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 is coming in from the outside without having gone through all the things they went through to get there. The man has built an operation outside and he's actually done something. And what have they done? There are a few of them in there that have done some things, but most of them are, 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 the, are like George McGovern, who went into the Congress, never ran a business. And when he left the Congress, set a business up and then he said, oh, that's, I didn't understand any of this. The man was passing laws against the businesses and so on and didn't know what it was he was doing and how what he was doing was in fact hurtful of, of the business. He didn't have the business background, didn't know how it played into the business world. You can tell that's also true of Barbara Lee Jackson out there in California running for um, uh, the position she's, she was running for. She's running for the senatorial uh, position that was vacated by uh, uh, Fein, uh, uh, Feinstein. And this one was proposing business that pay a minimum wage of $50 an hour. You can, you, you really can, you, you know she's not, she hadn't had ever, ever had any business experience. Because no person has business experience with in fact advocating thing like that. You can't have a business paying a minimum wage of $50 an hour because you're trying to get people to be able to pay their rent to their minimum wage job. And that's not even the way that you do it. You have to elevate, elevate your skill level to make yourself more valuable in the marketplace. And by being more uh, valuable, you make more money in the marketplace because the market will determine what your salary will be. Because you can sell your salary at a higher rate. But if you don't have the skills to do that, you cannot do that and you work at a minimum wage. But you don't get the minimum wage to go up to a skill level by raising the rate and then uh, forcing the, the person to pay the rate at a higher level because all you're doing there is creating unemployment. And that's been proven, proven also. Donald Trump comes from a different place than they, than, than they, than they came from. And now he's in the, uh, outside, of, but he's been inside of where they are. And he's, go, he's trying to go back in there. And they know he knows a lot more about how it works now than he did the first time it was around. And if he comes in there as a non-consecutive president, he's going in there with a lot more knowledge of what needs to be cleaned up in there. And this man poses an existential threat, and they know that. And the question is, how? what are they going to do next to try to stop him? I want to talk about some things that they tried to do already, but I want to challenge some things that, that they were using in terms of the, constitu the constitutionality, not only of the act, but the constitutionality of that which they were quoting that's in the Constitution that's also to be questioned as far as the constitutionality of that which is placed in the Constitution. Because I'm going to make another argument here that nobody else is making in this country. Uh, they claim they're trading this area here, but I'm, I'm going to make a constitutional argument here that they're not making. And the constitutional argument I'm going to make here is that as they try to use uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, I'm going to make an argument here that Section 3 is unconstitutional. Let me tell you something. You cannot place something in the Constitution that abrogates the original, the original intent of the document 
being constructed, created, and founded, and placed into the, the orbit as the orbit around the states as a governing decree of the of the of the entire country. What is the intention of the document? And you cannot amend it so that it stops doing that which it was set up to do. You cannot ask the, the document within the document to abolish itself. And there are certain things in the Constitution that effectively abolishes the way the government was to be constructed so as to restrain itself from going out of control. And I'm arguing here singularly in this country, but there are things in the Constitution that are unconstitutional. And I'm going to tell you where those, th where, where those things are. Now, in Article, in, in the 14th Amendment, they tried to use the third section of the 14th Amendment against Donald Trump. Let me read this to you and show you why I am saying here that although it is in the document, to my Amendment 14, Section 3 of that uh, amendment, this is unconstitutional. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why it's unconstitutional. But here's what Section 3 says. You lawyers for Donald Trump, pay attention to this because you don't get up here arguing about the president has um, presidential immunity. There's no pres there is no presidential immunity. Uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment says the following, no person shall, just a minute here. I want to make sure I read the right the right part of it because I don't want to uh, over, overload the circuit here with uh, reading things that's not germane to the point I'm trying to make. Okay, yeah. You see what I'm what I'm what I want to read here is that part. Where these people in the aftermath of the Civil War, this is the Civil War Amendment, they are sending their former Confederate officers to Congress in a certain way of defying the Union, because the Union is saying this, and they're saying it correctly, is that the South having lost the war, forced to come back into the Union through bayonet, they're, 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 they're putting their Confederate soldiers in their face. And you can imagine the uh, animosity that that brings because these people that are going in there fought them. Some of their friends were killed in, in the war. Some of their relatives were killed in that war. And these persons are now being, being put into being voted in there to serve in the same Union Congress side by side with those that stayed in the Union and the anger there is such, the resentment is such. And so they passed this uh, provision. No person shall be a senator or a representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the U United States, or under any state, who having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States Uh, that's almost all of them out there in that battlefield. Robert E. Lee and the rest of them. 
or as a member of the state legislatures or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the, 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 the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. All that group mentioned in that section of the third section of article of Amendment 14, all those persons are to be excluded from the Congress of the United States. Now, they tried to use that against Donald Trump and, and claim that, and that's why they were claiming that there was an insurrection in Washington on January the 6th. Of course, there was no insurrection because you don't insurrect without weapons. But let's look at the document itself and let's see something here that has not been discussed by all the other scholars that are discussing that. They're trying to, they don't have, they, they didn't have an objection to it being used, but I'm objecting to it not only um, uh, uh, being used against uh, uh, Trump and others because there was no insurrection, but I'm also objecting to it because I am saying that it does not belong in the document. Its placement is unconstitutional. Now, there are no scholars going along with me on this, I don't think. They certainly have not raised it. But here's the problem. In order to get the, 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 the states to come in and confederate, there's a confederation here, to confederate because each state is bringing their sovereignty to the confederation. And you're not talking about creating a Republican form of government. They already have a Republican form of government. And you have guaranteed to them that that would be maintained. So that in Article 4, Section 4, it says this. The United States, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government. A Republican form of government is that the people shall have the right to choose their own leaders. And those are the terms for forming the union. They're guaranteed the states will have the right I'm reading it from the document here in the original document. Article 4, Section 4, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government and shall pro protect each of them against invasion. And on application of the legislatures of all the executives, uh, when the legislature cannot be convened against uh, domestic violence. That part there, Article 4, Section 4, says that people have the right to choose their representatives. You cannot pass a law to amend that. Why? Because that's the term upon which they came together to ratify the document and to form a more perfect union. They came together to create the document based upon understanding that the doc document will in fact serve that, that end. It cannot be altered by section three. You scholars don't agree with that. So what do you say then about, about that? Is that the original intent of the document to guarantee a Republican form of government or is that not the intent? Because the intent was not to set up a democracy which is not used anywhere in the document. That cannot be contended. What's contended is they come together to form a more perfect union 
and the perfect unions be formed by, number one, guaranteeing to each state a Republican form of government. That's the glue, the mortar, through which they came together to form the United States of America. Each state being the a part of the United States, but the states themselves are the United States. This state is united with that state, the state united with the other state, 13 of them are united. And each of the states are guaranteed not to have their Republican form of government taken away from them by being a part of the collective. That's what they've agreed to. To have them now come together in the aftermath of the war, there's no exception stated in that language. If it is said in the original document, except in these cases here, then that could be placed in the document but there are no exceptions to it. The document speaks in, that, in absolute terms. And the term here is all states are guaranteed a Republican form of government, and therefore that cannot be amended at this point. Okay, that's a very important point to, to understand here because if you start to talk about amending things when it cannot be amended because the things intended was be written in stone and not to be cast aside by someone coming behind it and then upsetting the terms in which the agreement was in fact made to form the policy in the first place, that's a problem. Unless you have a guarantee it would not be altered so that you made a commitment and then the terms of the contract are changed through which you didn't commit to that. You would lead to what you have in 1860 because of that because the terms are not being observed. That's why they are succeeding later on. Because they're claiming that, that the terms, the contract that which they signed, those terms are being abrogated. And the abrogation of the terms, therefore, tears the contract up, and therefore that which they agreed to no longer, no, no longer applies. That's, what they are, that's why that cannot stand. That's why that's... That's why that's unconstitutionally placed in, in the document. The scholars don't, don't argue this. But that's because they don't understand that part of it. I'm right here. You can't put that in, in the document. It's in there. But I'm arguing here, and there's no argument to be made on the other side of this argument. The argument here is, is that the argument I'm making is that its placement is unconstitutional. You got to think about something here. How far you are from the time period when they're in that room and how many of the persons that are now uh, making this recommendation and the recommendations made in the 14th Amendment, that is passed in 18, uh, let's see, 1860, uh, 18, uh, um, 68. The 14th Amendment is, added to, is ratified in 1868. The Declaration of Independence, 1776. The Constitution of the United States, 1787. Look at how much time we're talking about here. So that when they're now talking about adding to the amendments during this, the, the, I call them the Civil War amendments, they're not going back and looking at whether or not this can be done based upon anything that's been written at that point. It's too, that's, that's so far away. And a lot of mistakes, mistakes are being made here. They could not, they, they could not under the Constitution impeach the senator they, that, that they uh, impeached, who is a senator at this point from, uh, from, from Tennessee. Because you cannot impeach senators. But you see, that's uh, really, that, that, that's the thing that really is 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 interesting that um, William Blunt, who was at the uh, convention, uh, would have submitted to uh, being impeached when he knew, when he had said in the convention, 
it only had been 10 years away from the time period. He is being impeached, and he knew that he should have known that that was not allowed by being in the convention. He's part of the convention. Now, the ones that were uh, uh, that were uh, bringing about the impeachment, they were not necessarily there. You can see the problem that you would have then, given that problem. That's only 10 years removed from it. But think about how many years have passed between what happened in Philadelphia in drafting the Constitution, and now we're down to 1868 in the ratification of the, of the 14th Amendment. They don't see that this is a contradiction of, of, of Article 4, Section 4, but it is because they had the right to, in fact, once you bring them back into the union, you, get, you, got, you got to understand that they have the right to choose their leaders. If you bring them back into the union, they have the right to choose their leaders. If you can't choose your leaders, you don't have a Republican form of government. If they can impose who your leaders are, I mean, do, are you going to object to, the, to that which they're doing right now? That's what they're doing to Donald Trump. That's why the, that's why I'm writing in, in, in my article. Nobody's writing what I'm writing. Nobody is writing what I'm writing on Facebook. No one is making the points I'm making on Facebook. I'm calling for, I, I've suspended my... Uh, Part two of an article I started on um, on Saturday, and I suspended it because I wanted to talk about what was happening in New York. Uh, and I, so, but I got back to it today. And when I was calling for it today and telling New York, you got to stand up. If you don't stand up and stop what they are doing. This thing will follow New York forever. You can't make this about Donald Trump. About how you feel about Donald Trump. This cannot be done. You cannot do what they're doing in those courts against Donald Trump. I'm surprised, quite frankly, in that Carroll case. I'm surprised that they did not argue the, the Constitution in E.G. Carroll, uh, I think her name is, getting 80 some million dollars for them going back changing the law so that they can go and trip Trump up or something that had happened beyond the statute of limitation and pass a law that singly targets Donald Trump. In fact, Kathy Holcomb said that because now people are nervous about what the investments are, are going to uh, reap in New York. Because they can do this to Donald Trump. They're not feeling too good about it either because they're investing in, in New York. And what if they turn on them? And Kathy Hogan came out and said this, that the, the others are not to be worried about anything because this is only going to apply to Donald Trump. Can you imagine a person saying that? That's, an ex that's a violation of Article 1, Section 9. Clause, uh, clauses two and three. So many levels. It's like a bill of attainder. We're not supposed to pass bill of attainder. Tell me about it. Yeah, that's a bill of attainder. Yeah, yeah, this is a uh, ex post facto laws. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if this was done to My a Democrat, goodness. they'd be rioting. If this was done to a, a Democrat, they'd be rioting. They'd be rioting. They'd be rioting. They'd be rioting. That's right. But this is like, no, no, it's okay because it's only going to be directed towards Trump. Oh, well, it's only going to be directed towards anybody else we don't like because, you know, we got a vision and we got to realize our vision. And you're just too stupid to get convinced of our visions better, even though it's going to destroy you, our vision, our vi I, I hate when the, uh, politicians talk about visions, my vision for the future. I don't want you to have a vision. I want you to be an administrator and back off me. All right. Yeah, I have my this, own vision. This is, this is, this is serious stuff here. You cannot, I don't know what people are thinking here. You, you can't let your animosity toward uh, Donald Trump, God, your your this these emotions, God, your reason. That's why I put Ayn Rand back on on my wall with that interview she did in 1979 with um, with Mike Wallace. You need to watch that interview. Ayn Rand was was arguing about uh, man must be in fact guided, women too guided by reason. 
You can't let your emotions run amok and have you involved in these kind of violations and say it's fine because you don't like the person that's being targeted. You've got to maintain the document put in place for the governance of the country. Do you understand what you're doing? I'm getting too emotional. Well, look, oh, look at this. You look at look at the TV show, the movies, okay? Like Star Wars. They always want you to go by emotion to assert your feelings, okay? I don't know if you ever. I'm gonna say I'm not. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. But that's what the liberals are. Search your feelings. You make motion. You make your yeah. own personal decisions based on emotions. I can't deny that. That's a good, large component of how most of us work. But for a for a nuts and bolts operation like the government's supposed to be, you got to have rule of law, and it can't be swayed back and forth because of emotional you know, intent or intent, intent, emotional upheavals. That's what it does, especially amongst the Democrats. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah, you gotta, we, get, we get to bring reasoning back into this. This is bigger than Donald Trump, uh, folks. And I'm calling for, and I did this uh, two days in, in, in a row, uh, because I think very strongly that we could lose everything in this. We have the very justice system. That we, we don't just have justice system on trial here. We have the American system on trial here. Because one thing that happened uh, prior to this, all of the, the world would invest in America. Why? Because it had stood the test of time with its documents. If I could turn back the hands of time. Well, the hands of time had shown that money could be invested in America when it couldn't be invested in the way else. Because it might not be safe to invest it uh, there. And I can tell you, and when I leave the, the country uh, in, 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 in May, I can tell you that I'll go into a lot of countries where those leaders that uh, put money to the side in case they have to leave the country, not putting that money in, 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 in countries in, in Africa. They're putting that money in the Swiss bank. They're putting it in, 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 in places outside of uh of Africa. They don't invest in, in Africa. They don't even vacation in Africa. People in Africa don't vacation in, 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 in Africa. When they vacation, they vacation elsewhere. But you have to have you have to have stability. People have to know that when they put their money somewhere, their money would not be confiscated. That's another danger that we we gotten into in this country. Using uh the people's money and tell them they can't have it because you disagree with the politics of what they're doing in their country. You don't agree with their foreign policy, and therefore you freeze their account. That's a danger to the country. They do that to America here in the United States, and people who are political oppose the Democrats. I mean, look at oh, look at what Boy, the, the Canadians did when they the, to the truck drivers when they were protesting. They seized their assets. That's all. Ludicrous. Boy, that's that's terrible. I mean, but think, oh no, they're visionaries. How dare you question their vision? I mean, that's that angers me. I'm, this I'm this, off this is them. getting this is getting to a place right now where uh, you don't take it. You don't take any bananas away now. This idea of you add a banana, you take a banana, we get close to banana republic. No, we're there yet. You we're doing things now that they are doing in a banana republic and something above that. Because you don't even see them doing uh, in these uh, banana republics what they're doing in, these, in this court in New York. And that's why New York has got to stand up. New York, you got to stand up and stop this. You cannot endorse what Letitia James is doing, where you can uh, bring a person in and charge him for a crime, and you can also bring him in and charge him for a, for a non crime. A non crime where those that loan money to uh, Donald Trump told the court, went into to Arthur Ingram's court and told him on the witness stand they were not victimized by anything, that if they had to do it all over again, they would loan to Donald Trump again and look forward to doing business with him in, in the future. Told the court that. And it, fought, it, it rolled off the court like water off the wings of a duck. It's like they, they didn't say it. And it still made a ruling in a in a, 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 a credit crime where there are no victims and they don't even know who they're going to pay the money to because nobody was victimized by it. There are no victims here. And yet the man is being paid, being made to pay for a non crime. If they can charge you for a crime and that's what they should do. If you create a crime, you you're charged for it, but they're not charging the people in New York for crimes that are being committed. 
people running into the store, running out people's stuff. They're not charging any of that. They got their total uh, attention on getting Donald Trump as they're working in consortium with the White House. Let's, let's admit that that's going on. Fanu, Fanu uh, Willis in uh, Fulton County, Georgia, is working with the White House. Been there a couple of times talking to Kamala Harris. They are, this is all contrived. This is all emotional nonsense that's going on. The Constitution is being cast to the side. Again, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the exile that... Um, Napolitano talked about, yeah, the, the Constitution is, 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 is in exile, but now it's being trampled on, just stepping on the document. You can't have uh, an ex post facto law. We all are in jeopardy if you do that. Well, you pass a, a law and then it goes to behavior already engaged in and make that behavior that was not illegal, illegal now that you made that illegal based upon a post facto ex post facto fiat law. If you got fiat law, you don't have law. We need to stop saying this as well. People are saying we got a two-tier justice system. You don't have a two-tier <laughs> you don't have a two-tier justice system. You don't have a justice system. You know how we try to finesse it? You don't if you have one law that applies in this case, let's say Hillary Clinton. And then in another case, Let's say Donald Trump. And in this case, Joe Biden got documents. In this other case, again, Donald Trump. And the one that had no right to documents is, in fact, they have some excuse why he can't be held to account. He's too old. He's not aware of what he did. Can't bring him in, couldn't answer the questions, and we're not going to charge him. But over here, you're not going to say, then we can't charge over here as well, because if you have the law applied differently here, you can't apply it differently over there. If the law is being applied over here in a certain way, you can't then go in the same, and this is in the same time period when this is going on, where they're going to say then they can apply it differently in the same time period against this person and, and not the other person. I'm not, for, I'm, 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 I'm not, I, I think, I really think if we are a serious country, I don't see how you cannot charge uh, Biden. Because Biden had no, no right to the document as a senator of the, of the country. A senator cannot have uh, classified uh, documents. Why? Because he doesn't have the institutional authority through the check and balance system, he doesn't have the institutional authority to classify or declassify documents. And the, and the danger of this is the president does have, a, have that authority. And they're saying that because he had classified documents, that he alone can have the documents that they're classified documents. Because by having them and then using them in a certain way, they did they, they classify it just by the handling of the documents. There's no process that you can give the president to go through in order to do that. Why? The, the powers are separated. Now, this idea that Biden can be excused for that, then you're saying here that the law then is arbitrary. And that's a danger to the country. Because if the law is arbitrary, the law is what this guy said, the late Alison Hastings said, and he wasn't saying it in a complimentary way. He said the law is what we say it is. That's a threat. The man's bragging about that. How do you say that in the Congress? The law is what we say it is. The law is not what you say it is. The law is what the Constitution says it is. The other thing that you have to get off of, and I'm telling you that this, you got to get off this also, the law is not what the nine judges of the Supreme Court say. Isn't that the law? The law is what the Constitution of the United States says. And they must follow the law too, just like everybody else follows it. Donald Trump must follow the law. I'm not arguing he has... Uh, immunity and I need to and you need to get off this idea that George Washington uh, uh, had done what uh, what they're saying uh, they're saying Trump can't do it because uh, George Washington uh, they bring his name up uh, this idea of um, executive privilege I want somebody to show 
man, look here. Look. Stop lying. Stop lying on the famous of this country. They're saying that Jordan invoked uh, even Trump's lawyers, uh, Navarro, was 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 saying that that um, he's trying to assert that he didn't go before the January 6th committee uh, asserting executive privilege of the president, and he didn't go there uh, because uh, the privilege is being, is, is being uh, exerted. Now, they claim that, that that is exerted because George Washington exerted the privilege. I'll tell you what you scholars are not going to do. You're not going to show me that in the history books because that's not true. I know what you're saying, That's not, but it's not true. I'm telling you it's not true. What George Washington did was something very different from that. And I want you to understand this, you lawyers for, for, for Donald Trump, I want you to understand this. Because you're saying that also, that he exerted, he exerted, he exerted uh, privilege. George Washington did not exert privilege. George Washington told them when they told when they told Washington through the separation of powers that they wanted to come into the executive branch and demand that he give them the text that was going on inside of the over and it, well not well not the Oval Office because the, the the first president in in Washington would have been Thomas Jefferson. The government is not in, in Washington at this point, but what Washington is telling them is that. If you want to be privy to the documents, and they, what they're arguing about is the Jay's Treaty, which there, there were a lot of Jay, Jay, John Jay, the first uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, had signed a treaty that had everybody in the country up in arms. In fact, Jay would say later on, you could he could find his way home from the uh, the capital of the country. He could find his way home in the dark by the number of, of persons that were burning him in effigy all up and down the country. It was so unpopular. Now the uh, the the government wants to look at the notes to find out how that agreement was in fact made and what were the person side of the executive branch. And what were they saying back and forth that led to this particular end? And Washington doesn't tell them that exec executive privilege. Washington tells them this. They have the right to document, but only if you, in fact, go through the process in which you get the documents. Washington wasn't exerting executive privilege. He was exerting the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> don't get me started on that. I'm, I'm going to use some words here that I don't like to use. Washington did not exert executive privilege. Stop lying on the president of the United States. There is no executive privilege. Well, let me let me put let me let me let me rectify that. There is executive privilege. The privilege is being president of the United States. It's a privilege to serve this country as president of the United States. Not everybody can do it, and we've only had 56, we've only had 46 persons person that have done it. It's a privilege to sit in that seat. Can you imagine to sit in the seat that was set there by the first president of the United States and you are sitting and you are fulfilling that seat? It's a privilege for you to do that. The problem we got today is that we have people serving that does not see it as a privilege. This is an opportunity to aggrandize their position and grow their wealth and increase their income and, and solidify their retirement and live comfortable and so on and so forth at the expense of the country. I'm ready to throw every last one, one of y'all out, quite frankly, because you don't appreciate that you're getting, that you're there. And for the reason, and, and you don't understand the reason why you're there and don't serve the interests of, of why you're there. And that's almost, there's probably only about, I, I, don't, I don't think they're, I'm going to be very kind here. There are not five people in that Congress that's there for the right reason. 
And many of them are, 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 are really glad that what has happened to Trump is happening to Trump. Have you all been listening to what these persons that ran against Trump in the primary in the Republican Party, like Chris Christie, for example? That guy wanted to be president of the United States. Have you seen this guy almost in a celebratory mood over there saying they're going to get him? They wanted them to get uh, Donald Trump. The law be darned. They don't care anything about the restraints upon power. They want this man gone. This is a travesty. I'm not, even if I were not supporting Donald Trump, and I said this in my article as well, I, if I am a supporter of Donald Trump, I don't, I don't have, I'm not trying to hide that from anybody. I'm very proud of the fact that I voted for the man uh, two times. I would vote for him a third time uh, because he's won twice already. He's been voted uh, twice for president. Been go he's gone in there one time. Not the first one to do that. And it won't be the last unless we get a handle on what this what what our what our governing document requires. Donald Trump was elected in twenty in twenty twenty, no doubt about that. The election was in fact rigged, and I can prove that in in a, in a number of ways. I don't. You made a mistake uh, of, of talking about the about the machines. I think your intent was very good, uh, uh, Powell. Powell is a very brilliant. Uh, lawyer, but she made a mistake in talking about the machines and blaming it on, on machines. I don't know what role the machines played in it. I tell you, we don't need the machines to explain that there was discrepancy in that election. You heard Hillary Clinton saying it. Go back and look and look. Get bring out the tapes. <coughs> what Hillary Clinton said to Biden. Listen very carefully here. She didn't have a crystal ball, but here's what she said. She said, do not concede if you, if you are trailing early in the polls and you will eventually prevail. She wasn't talking from a crystal ball. She was saying, do not do what I did in 2016 when she conceded, but didn't do it until we hour of the morning because what was going on behind the scenes? I'll tell you what was going on behind the scenes. They were trying to find if there was any way, any way out of declaring Donald Trump as president. And there was no way out. You know why? Because they believed their own uh, uh, narrative that the guy had no shot, his campaign is a joke, and she's gonna slam dump him in the electoral college. she get phony electoral, they actually believe that. Get phony electoral votes. They were saying, this man, if he gets 100, he's doing well. And they found out on November the 8th, 2016, that Donald Trump was not a joke. She was telling uh, Biden not to concede because she had conceded, but it took a long time to do so because they were behind the scenes trying to uh, uh, remedy uh, the, the verdict of the voters, but had no other horses uh, out there to do that. And having then... No, nothing else in place. She came down, finally made the phone call and and, and made a concession. Be telling Trump, she's telling Trump's opponent not to do that in 2020. Why? Because the fix was in, and I know it's in just based on that, but I'll tell you another way I know it was in. Because of this. And I end on this note here. Kamala Harris was the first one to bow out in the primary in, in the Democratic Party. And Biden was pulled across the finish line as the presidential nominee, as he limped across that line, was dragged across that line by uh, James Clyburn in South Carolina. He was limping across the line himself. You got a weak ticket here. But Kamala Harris, who didn't add anything to the ticket, she bowed out very early and California is in, is in the blue, no matter who is the candidate. So that was not an issue. And she's placed on that ballot. You know why? Because they didn't need uh, uh, any, any uh, 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 thing that she brought to the ticket. Because that rigging was in because you don't do that unless you're assured of the of outcome of the election. Because you always try to find a way. That's why you won't find... Uh, Donald Trump 
choosing um, uh, the governor of, of Florida. Why not? Because the governor of Florida cancels out some of the votes. Because you cannot have the two running in the same state and the vote of that state is in def therefore being counted. Florida will cancel out the 29 electoral votes of Florida. It ain't going to happen. Uh, the, the governor of, of Florida would not be on that ticket for that reason. Well, for a lot of other reasons too, but for that reason in particular. But she was placed on that ticket. Didn't have to worry about the vote. That's how I know it was fixed. I said it was fixed at that time when I saw that happening. How is she on the ticket? I was asking myself. That's how. The, the election was rigged. And there are two different ways of, of seeing it, and don't have to go to the uh, to the um, to, uh, to the to the machines. Okay, I'm getting too worked up here and got <laughs> got to calm down. But look, folks, this is serious. The framers put something in place here, folks. I got to tell you, we got to get back to the framers. That's the bottom line. In New York, you got a role to play. Stand up, New York. Until next week, I want you to follow your dream. If you don't follow your dream, you'll never know what's on the other side of the rainbow.